Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So many of you joined us for the great big Minecraft dig over on Twitch. Thank you so much for that, by the way. During and after that stream, lots of you were saying that you wanted to excavate in your own worlds and servers like archaeologists actually would. We didn't really showcase how to prepare for a Minecraft archaeological excavation on stream, so today I'm going to talk about how you can organize an excavation for you and your friends on your own Minecraft server. I've already made a video about finding sites, which I've linked to both in the info cards and in the end screen. For this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a site in mind. If you don't, don't worry at all about it. Just remember to do that before you worry about the rest of this. So now that you have a site to dig, you need to do what's called a desk-based assessment. A desk-based assessment is a fancy term for doing all the research you can about the site you're going to dig. Where is it? Have there been any maps made of the area? How many maps have been made and from what different periods? Do older maps show anything different to what's there today? Has anybody dug that site before? If it's, say, a trail ruins on, like, a server, then maybe nobody has, but if you've made your own ruins for everyone to excavate, or if it's, say, a desert temple in a server that's been going for a while, maybe somebody has dug it already. Or if you're exploring an ancient city as an archaeological site, obviously there's no sus gravel in ancient cities, but if you want to treat it like an archaeological excavation, there is that campsite that might generate in the structure that shows somebody has been there before. Based on the type of site you think it is, what are you expecting to find? What potential archaeology are you expecting there to be? And what archaeology do you know is there? And desk-based assessment isn't just about archaeology, it's also about the environment the site sits in. Many archaeological sites sit inside nature reserves or protected land or protected seas. In desk-based assessment, you need to talk about how your archaeological work is going to work within conservation efforts and how the project will affect the surrounding ecology. There are also protections for the local human community, and you should always consider how your dig will affect the people who live nearby. Desk-based assessment is a lot, but basically you're trying to get a sense of what we already know about the site, what other people have already done at the site, and any specific protections or plans that already exist for the site or will exist soon. And the reason that we do all of that is A, because legally and ethically that's what you should do, but also because it's going to help you figure out what you and your team can do at the site. Now we definitely don't need to go through all that paperwork in Minecraft. This is a video game and we do want it to be fun but it is a good idea to at least have a think about what you want this area to be. Do you want the site you're digging to be fully exposed to the sky, or would you rather have people descend into an underground area or a cave and explore the site that way? Is there another site or a village or maybe even somebody's base nearby? Does the site jut into a river that maybe you'd really like to keep where it is? Or maybe it spawned in a lukewarm ocean? Somehow? I don't really... I don't... I don't... Is this legal? You can also generally predict what a site is going to be in Minecraft, especially if you're digging one of the naturally generated structures. Trail ruins, ocean ruins, desert temples, and wells all have certain structural elements, and you can get a sense of what you'll find there based on either other sites that you or your friends have dug, sites that other content creators you watch have dug, or through looking it up on the Minecraft wiki. The next thing we have to sort out in real-world archaeology are permissions, protections, and risk assessments. So more paperwork. You'll find out pretty quickly through this series that a lot of archaeology is paperwork. It's important paperwork, it's vital paperwork, but it's probably a bit more paperwork than you necessarily thought archaeologists do. Almost all archaeological sites are on land or in waters that are owned by somebody, and usually that someone isn't an archaeologist. In fact, a lot of archaeological sites are found on farms, in car parks, just offshore in fishing zones, halfway up a mountain, or in various caves or, or cliffs. Do you, do you see, see what I did there? Did you... do you... You definitely can't just go digging up somebody's property, so usually we need to get permission from whoever owns the land or water that we're wanting to dig in. The site might also be protected on a national or international level, and in many countries it's possible that your dig proposal might be voted on by at least one branch of the government. 
If the dig is in a communal space like a churchyard, then you need permission not just from whoever owns the land, but also from whoever has a stake in that land, like the people who go to that church or people whose relatives might be buried in that churchyard. In Minecraft, a good rule of thumb is similar to something you'd use for spacing out your bases. If a site is close enough to someone's base or farm or resource mine that you wouldn't build there without permission, then you really shouldn't dig there without permission either. And then there's a lovely thing called risk assessment. Risk assessment details the possible hazards that you or the other archaeologists might encounter and lays out plans of what to do in case that happens. It's really, really important paperwork for keeping everyone safe. In Minecraft, there's not a huge need to do a risk assessment on paper, and there's even not necessarily a huge need to do a risk assessment in Minecraft anyway, unless you're playing on hardcore. But I would say that it's worth thinking about hazards like drowning, or falling into the trench, or having gravel fall on top of someone, that kind of stuff, just so that you can think about some things you can do as a team to maybe minimize that risk. Okay, so that's a lot of paperwork, and again, as I've said, it's necessary paperwork in the real world, but I can hear all of you chomping at the bit to actually do something, so let's move on to equipment. To do a dig properly, you generally need a lot of stuff. Shovels and spades are really good for starters. Pickaxes are also really handy, and we use them in archaeology a fair amount. We also love a good mattock. In fact, we generally love mattocks more than pickaxes. A mattock is kind of like a pickaxe, but it's got a hoe-like bit on one end and an axe-like bit on the other. In real life, an archaeologist never goes to a dig without their trowel, and in Minecraft, you should never go to a dig without your brush. Chests are also helpful for storing dirt or gravel or stone, and also for storing any artifacts that you find. When Joel Duggan, Pixel Riffs, Ulraf, and I were excavating a trail ruins on stream, we would dig the sus gravel, then remove the gravel block and place a concrete block in its place, and then place a sign on the concrete and write what it was that we found. Black Moonstone in my community then took that idea and traded the concrete for glass and the signs for item frames so that she could put the artifact in the item frame instead, and that is also a fantastic idea. So I would say bringing some way of marking the finds where you found them can be a really good idea in terms of figuring out what these structures were used for. You could even color code them by artifact type if you wanted to separate things out like pottery sherds or armor trims or something. Also, if you're on a server, you might want to put a fence up around the site in part so that other players don't fall in, but especially so that creepers don't fall in. It would also be good to have a healthy supply of food on hand for everyone so that you're not worrying about survival while digging out a site. For deeper sites, I would also recommend taking some scaffolding or some ladders to help you get up and down the trench, although we'll talk about other methods for doing that as well. And for sites and biomes where it rains or snows, it would be a really good idea to maybe build a tarp or some kind of covering over the site so that you don't have to dig in the rain and so that snow doesn't start covering your site every time it snows. A book and quill is always good for writing things down. Archaeologists often have what's called a day book on site, which is a book that the people in charge of the dig generally fill out about what we did each day. It can be fairly straightforward, like dug second half of trench B today, found a wall, I think it's defensive for the house that's inside, or it can be things like it rained all day and the tarp broke, really not good, we hate the weather and are rather miserable. Think of it a little bit like a captain's log. You can put in as much or as little of your own personality as you like. It's also helpful for other people on the dig to have something to write down their thoughts. No one is going to be excavating everything at the site unless you're doing this solo, and everyone will have different experiences and different thoughts about what they're digging. You can also write notes outside of the game, and for many of you that might be a lot easier than using a book and quill, so definitely, like, if you want to do that, j go for it. And finally, at least of the materials and equipment that we use in real life that you can use in Minecraft too, I would recommend having some maps and some bands to be able to map out the area and mark various parts of the site on that map. It can really help to give a sense of where things are, and you can also make maps that are more zoomed out if you want to get a larger picture. Now, there are plenty of things we use in archaeology in the real world that don't really exist or don't work the same in Minecraft. Wheelbarrows, buckets, kneeling pads, 
fines bags galore, wooden planks for getting the wheelbarrows in and out of the trench. We also use GPS systems, levels, something called a total station, ranging rods and info boards for when we take photographs. There's a lot of other equipment archaeologists use for specific parts of a dig as well that we can't use in Minecraft, but I'll cover all of those things in future videos. But there's also equipment we have in Minecraft that I wish we could use in real life archaeology. Top of that list is definitely an elytra and rockets. Can you imagine a dig where you can just fly out of the trench or fly up to the sky to get a better view? I know we have ladders and drones and stepped trenches and things, but elytra are just cool and I would say they are a must for digging out any trail ruin in Minecraft. Potions are also something I wish we had in real life. Potions of night vision, slow falling, water breathing, or even potions of leaping would be super useful on site. Headlamps help in real life with the night vision situation, and oxygen helps when scuba diving, but slow falling or leaping just isn't really a thing you can do on Earth, and they're super useful in Minecraft. Beacons are another huge help if you're digging out a trail ruin so that it's fully exposed to the sky. Be careful, because a haste 2 beacon with an efficiency 5 shovel means that you will just destroy all of the sus gravel. But a haste 2 beacon and efficiency 5 tools is a huge help digging out those many layers of dirt and stone above the structure. And speaking of efficiency, enchantments are something that we can't take advantage of in real life, but I absolutely wouldn't dig a site in Minecraft without them. I mean, I could, and maybe like a desert well, you don't really need enchantments, but I'm not, I would never want to dig out a trail ruins without enchantments. Efficiency is massively helpful for the non-archaeology bits, but Unbreaking 3 and Mending are really good to have on literally all of your tools, but especially on your brush and your elytra. I also like to have Silk Touch, Unbreaking 3, and Mending on my picks and shovels as I dig as well. And can we just take a minute to appreciate the majesty that are shulker boxes? In real life, we have to put all of the dirt and rocks that we dig somewhere. We can't just put it in a chest or a shulker box. Here's a photo of a site I dug where we couldn't even put the dirt in a pile on a tarp or anything. We actually actually had to put it into bags. Can you imagine if we could just stick all of these into a box and put the box in a chest? That would be so useful. And the same goes for fines. Just give every person a shulker box to put their artifacts in and you're good to go. Those boxes can fit in a single chest. They might even fit in the same chest that the dirt and the stones are in. And you have all of this space left over. No living rooms full of artifacts, no massive piles of dirt on site, no dozens of stones that you need to pick up later and put back into the trench. Can you tell I'm a bit jealous? Because I'm a bit jealous. Okay, so leaving my love of shulker boxes aside, anvils are also really handy in Minecraft to be able to rename things, which you might want to do for things like samples or artifacts. If you want to use the system archaeologists use, we generally give everything a number, so having a way to record that number on the object would be really helpful. You will need a lot of anvils for that though, so may maybe make sure you've got a lot of iron ready. I would also recommend easy access to an XP farm just in case you need it. If you're digging one trail ruin, you should be fine so long as everyone comes with full durability on everything, assuming that they have diamond or netherite tools. But if you're digging multiple trail ruins at once, maybe have a way for people to mend their stuff. And the last thing in Minecraft that you'll find useful is a cartography table for either locking or duplicating maps. We can do this in the real world actually using software called GIS or a Geographic Information System, which is a mapping software that lets you create maps using different coordinate systems. So technically we can just print another copy of the map or add new points or details to it, but it takes longer than the cartography table would in Minecraft, so it would still be cool if we could make that process faster in real life. So you've got your tools, you've got your shulkers, you've got your potions and elytra and food and scaffolding. Now you need a place to sleep. Digging a trail ruin, even with friends, can take about two to three hours. You might find that you go faster. I'm going off of how long it took us to dig one on stream and how long it's taken me to dig them on my own. So your mileage may vary, but expect to spend at least five to six in-game days digging. In Minecraft, you can just have people bring beds and sleep in the trench, but it could also be fun to build some accommodations accommodation for everyone. A lot of people think that archaeologists camp in tents when we're on a dig, and I won't say that that's 100% wrong, but I have dug in a few different countries and I've never stayed in a tent. Usually we stay in what's called a dig house. That's dig 
house with a G, just FYI, which is a house that the head of the excavation has rented for everyone to sleep in. It might be a single building, like a, like a single house, or it could be a couple separate buildings, one that is used for sleeping maybe, and one that's used for eating or gathering, for example. In Minecraft, I'd recommend thinking about where players are going to stay when you're digging, even if it's more for fun than function. And for the record, you absolutely can use tents instead of a house. Just because I've never stayed in one doesn't mean nobody has. My understanding is that most people opt for houses because archaeologists get really dirty and sweaty and staying in a tent only makes that worse. Also, if something happens to someone on a dig, then the organization that has organized the dig is usually liable for that. If people are staying in a tent, then the chance of something going wrong is usually higher. So a lot of places will opt for buildings instead of tents. Okay, so we've got a place to stay and store things, we've got our equipment, the only thing left really is to make sure that there's a way to travel to the site. Since this is Minecraft, you'll probably have people either walk or use an elytra, and your accommodation is probably pretty close to the site because you can build it anywhere. In the real world, I've had two sites that I could easily walk to, quite a few where we drove in either a minibus, a truck, or a Land Rover, and one dig where we actually had to hike up a mountain every day just to get to the site. Also, if you're excavating underwater, you'll probably need boats, or you're gonna need to swim. Actually, chest boats are gonna work really well for underwater archaeology, just store all your shulkers in there and you are good to go. You could also use donkeys, mules, horses, or llamas to get to sites on land, of course. Don't don't use them to go underwater. <laughs> you could also use pigs or striders, but that would take a while. And if you really want to lean into the 1.25, you could take camels to site each day. And that's it! You're ready to dig! You definitely don't need everything in this video to do a dig in Minecraft. Honestly, you can probably get away with just some chests, stone tools, and brushes, but it'll be a lot harder and a lot slower. If you do a dig in real life, you'll absolutely need most, if not all, of these and additional equipment on top of all that, so if you're aiming for a relatively realistic archaeology vibe, plus an elytra and shulkers because why wouldn't you, they're amazing, then this list has got you covered. I said at the beginning that I would link to my video on how to find Minecraft's archaeological sites using real archaeological techniques, and that's this one right here. But a lot of you have also been asking about how to build your own ruins in Minecraft, which is pretty important if you want your server to dig up a site that you've made instead of one that generates naturally. If you're struggling to build your own ruins, or you're just curious about what an archaeologist thinks about when building these things, take a look at this video over here. That's all from me for today. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!